Welcome back to solving advection equation using final differencing. So in the last video I talked about uh, lax Frederick scheme where we wanted to improve the stability of forward in time and center in the space. So if you remember from before we talked about uh, a scheme in which we use forward in time and center in the space. Uh, this is on page 170 of the class notes and uh, we argue that for forward in time and center in space the method is unconditionally unstable so we did von Neumann analysis and we realized that the magnitude of the perturbation grows over time so to improve this method Lax and Fredericks came up with a method that we can replace un at x equal x i by the average of un i plus 1 and un i minus 1. So that is called lax Fredericks. If you go to page 172, yes, that is page 172, uh, we started talking about lax Fredericks where we replaced the un unj with unj plus 1 plus unj minus 1 average. Okay, so uh, the right side is the central difference of the spatial derivatives. Okay, so we know that uh, always the higher index for time would be the unknown, so we're going to keep un plus 1j on the left and move everything to the right side. So that's what we get up um, after all. Okay, so now uh, to do the stability analysis, what we do is we replace our uh, generic term u and j with uh, x raised to n power exponent of i k x j. All right, so by doing so, uh, we cancel out all c's from both sides and exponential of i k x j also from both sides as before. We ended up getting something like now c equals one half of exponential of i k delta x plus exponential of minus i k delta x minus alpha over two exponential of i k delta x minus exponential of minus i k delta x. So we can replace this by two cos k delta x using Euler's method. We replace this by minus. Uh, I'm sorry, by two i sine k delta x. The two cancel out, so from the first term you get cos, from the second term you get minus i alpha sine. This is xi. Now uh, we calculate the xi squared or magnitude of xi squared, which is xi times the complex conjugate of xi. And uh, so then we get cos squared plus alpha sine squared. So this can be written as 1 plus, well, we can actually add and subtract sine k del x squared. The addition is combined with cos squared, so we get one. And the subtracting subtracted term is grouped with this term, so you get alpha squared minus one sine squared. Now, if alpha squared is less than one, then because sine is also less than one, this whole thing would be less than uh, would be negative also uh, uh, bigger than minus one. So anyways, one plus that is going to be always positive and less than one. So uh, if alpha is less than one, this whole thing would be less than one as well. Okay, so which means conditional is stable. Now, if alpha is bigger than one, then this guy is positive, this is positive. You add one positive number to one, so the overall result would be bigger than one so it's unstable right so the condition would be alpha less than one all right so um so here's another view to see why uh, the method using lex fedrix is conditionally stable when alpha is less than one because when you put alpha less than one you bring in some diffusivity and that diffusivity actually 
and lowers the perturbation, lowers the errors, and that actually kills the errors. It doesn't let the error grow over time. So this is called uh, this is called numerical numerical dissipation. That means numerically we dissipate the error. And to see that, what we do is so this is our uh, this is our lax Frederick. So we have uh, uh, n plus one j on the left side, and then central differencing on the right side. Now remember, for lax Frederick, we are supposed to replace u n j by the average of u n j plus one and u n j minus one. And that's what we did here. So this is the average of u and j plus one and j minus one. All right. So uh, these two used to be on the left. We move it to the right, so it becomes plus. Now I didn't actually remove u and j, but I I added the same thing on the right side. So basically, that doesn't change anything because this u and j and that u and j cancel out, which means that I already and removed u and j, but I kept it here because I want to show you how the numerical diffusivity or numerical dissipation comes about. Okay, so this is again, this is still lax Fredericks. We re replaced u and j by the average of nj plus 1 and nj minus 1. All right, so now let's convert these to continuum form. So in the continuum, this is nothing but du dt. Well, the forward Euler version of it would be this discretization. So that used to be du dt. So uh, uh, we move this, we move this term to the to the left side. Then you get plus v, and then this thing is du dx. That's the central difference version of du dx. So just replace it by du dx. Now this term is nothing but the second derivative of u with respect to well if i divide if i divide this by del x squared and multiply by del x squared then i get one half del x squared over del t and then this thing divide by del x squared now this thing by di divide by del x squared is the second derivative of u with respect to x if you refer to the final difference table i posted on the lecture on the on the lecture notes tab so in the continuum version this difference equation is nothing but uh, this differential equation where you see that suddenly we have a diffusion term but this diffusion term comes about just because we added you know the average of u and j plus one and u and j minus one and replace u and j by that so um so this numerical viscosity or numerical diffusion has a prefactor of one half del x squared over del t. All right, so uh, so we're going to see this uh, this diffusion or viscosity, uh, numerical viscosity. Once I show you the MATLAB script, and when you run a simulation and you see that how you know your solution uh, diffuses over time is because of this uh, empirical numerical viscosity in the method. All right, now let's look at the order of accuracy. In terms of the order of accuracy, uh, the left side is the forward Euler. We know that it's uh, it's the first order in time. This is central difference. It's the second order in the space. This thing, uh, and this is the second derivative with respect to x. All right. Uh, so this is the second order in the space as well, but we multiply it by this coefficient del x squared over del t. Now we know that uh, we have a condition for uh, for alpha, and alpha was remember del t and uh, del x times v divided by del t. So if we go back, this is our alpha, right? So for stability, we had the condition of alpha being less than one. So once we put alpha less than one, we already relate delta t to del x. So basically, that means del t is proportional to del x because alpha is constant. Let's say it's something less than one. All right, so wherever I have delta t, I can think of delta x. I mean, delta t is proportional to delta x. So when I look at this term, I argue that this is the second order in, in space. So this is like O del x squared. There's another del x squared here. And then del t is also proportional to del x through alpha. So then overall, this term would be O del x cubed, as I explained here. So this is O del x cubed. This is O del x squared because we use central difference. 
and this is O del T, which means O del X. So overall, the method would be O del T because of this term, and O del X is squared because this is this is the higher, this is actually the lower, sorry. This is the lower and del X is squared. So if we have O del X is squared and O del X cubed, the lower uh, power of del X actually dominates, dominates the solution. So overall, the method is O del T, O del X squared. All right. So, yeah. So now, uh, so this is exactly what I was just talking about. O del, uh, du dt is on the order of del T. This is on the order of del X squared. And then the right side is on the order of del X cubed. So, now, if you put everything together and del x goes to 0, then because this is raised to the third power, this actually decays much faster than this term because that's del x squared, this is del x cubed. So this term immediately goes to 0. That, that means uh, when del x actually goes to 0, if you make your discretization very, very fine, you don't see this dissipation anymore. But in, you know, in normal del x, we usually see this dissipation. All right. So I'm going to show you the MATLAB script, and uh, and we're going to see the difference between you know Leapfrog that we covered last time and Max Fredrix. So we're going to go over Leapfrog first. So here's the Leapfrog code. Uh, we start with number of discretization in the space and time, initial time, final time, left and right side of the boundary. We put velocity equal to for now. For this velocity, our alpha is less than one, so we get stable. You get stable method using CFL condition. Skeptical five is just to make animation. All right, so uh, we create the mesh grid using the time vector and spatial vectors. We create our time space grid, and for every grid, we assign a uh, a U for the uh, the concentration. All right, so u is going to be our concentration. So here's our alpha, which is v del t over del x. This is non-dimensionalized velocity. So our initial condition would be a heavy side function, which means uh, it's equal to one on the left side and equal to zero on the right side. And it's that step is is, is exactly uh, you know at about one times ten to the minus five, which is very close to zero. So at a point equal to almost zero, suddenly we get a drop in the concentration from one to zero. All right, because uh, leapfrog uh, requires uh, or it's uh, it's second order in a space and second order in time, we need two boundary con or two initial conditions. Um, so and this is the initial condition at time zero. We need another initial condition at time equal one. So uh, because MATLAB cannot get uh, you know um, index of zero, so our initial index, or at time zero, our index is, is going to be one. At time equal one, our index is going to be two. So for for the for the first time, still we have to create another. Uh, uh, we have to we have to create the condition uh, such that the method can 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 uh, can proceed. All right. So we're going to use upwind scheme to create the values of the concentration at this at the first time step again at zero it's given by the problem and the first time step we have to do another method another first order method to create uh, the concentration then we use the values at uh, t equals zero and t equal one to create a t equal to remember leapfrog has um has two mesh grid points two sets uh, which they don't cross talk so for every point, we need the result from previous two time steps. This is uh, time step one, this is time step zero. All right, so now I'm going to run the code and show you what happens to our step function as it proceeds over time. So in the next video, I'll show you the result of this MATLAB execution. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.